in this kinematic problem, one dimension, we have two cars that start out side by side. And again, I'd recommend you make a little sketch of the situation. So time equals zero is over here on the left. Car A and car B are uh, side by side. Uh, car A, though, is traveling at 60 miles an hour. Car B is zero miles per hour. Car A has constant speed. Car B is going to accelerate at a constant 5.4 meters per second squared. Um, so at time equals zero, they're side by side. Car B is going faster and faster and faster. Eventually it will catch up with car A. And the question is how much time uh, is going to elapse before they're side by side. So we uh, can solve this by uh, noting that if they're side by side again, they've traveled the same distance. And kinematics, we have some equations that uh, describe the distance traveled as a function of time. So we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, I want to work in the metric system. So we uh, uh, convert the 60 miles an hour into meters per second. And a little humor here. Think about miles per gallon of my vehicle. But miles per hour is our conversion factor. 0.447 meters per second is one mile per hour. So 60 miles an hour converts to 26.8 uh, meters per second. You perhaps should double check that. Um, and car A, its distance is described simply as distance equals rate times time. There's no acceleration for car A. So the distance, it's unknown, is equal to the rate for car A, a constant 26.8 meters per second, multiplied by the time that's unknown. There are two unknowns here. Well. If there are two unknowns, we need a second equation. The second equation is provided by car B. For car B, there is acceleration. So we have to use the kinematic equation that includes an acceleration term. Um, that is distance traveled is our starting position plus, or I should say final position here, is starting position plus initial velocity multiplied by the time of travel and then one half acceleration and time squared. Notice that, uh, or remind yourself here, this uh, does require that the acceleration is constant. Uh, this equation is only valid if the acceleration is constant. Well, starting position is zero, we can claim that, and starting velocity is zero. Um, so we just have the last term here, 0.5 times the acceleration that's given and meters per second squared times the time squared. Well, we don't know what x is, but we can equate these two calculations for x. They're both x. It's the same x. Car A and car B both arrive at the final position uh, at this time t. So we're going to write down the equation on the left side, the equation for car A's position. And on the right side, the equation, the calculation for car B's position. And now we only have time as an unknown. <coughs> it is quadratic, but it simplifies easily. Uh, if we would divide both sides by t, we already know that at t equals 0, we're going to have a true statement. 0 equals 0. They're both at position 0. Uh, so now we divide by uh, t, and we produce an equation that is linear in time. So I'm going to drop the units here, but uh, 26.8 divided by t, we just get 26.8. On the right side, 0.5, 5.4, multiplied by t squared, we divide by t, I have t to the first power remaining. And 26.8, on the right side I have 2.7, a half times 5.4. So I'm dividing both sides by 2.7 produces the time, and that time number is 9.926 seconds. I'm going to round, of course, um, typically when I would uh, write this problem. So we're side by side, but I'm, I'm going to use this time in another calculation here. So I'm going to let you know what it is. But um, if this was the final number for the problem, um, we have really two significant figures in the acceleration, but I have always told my students, go ahead and write down three. Uh, if we're not in a lab situation, um, I prefer students to write down 
three significant figures or three digits in their answer for homework problems just so they don't happen to get the right answer by some error in calculation. Uh, less chance of that if they're writing down three digits. Anyway, 9.93, oh, sorry, seconds is the uh, time when the cars are side by side. Uh, but additionally, I'm interested in uh, what's the speed of car A and what's the speed of car B. Can you tell me right now what the speed of car A is after it's been traveling for 9.93 seconds? Could pause the video and think about it a little bit more. Car A is traveling at constant speed, 60 miles per hour. So it's still 60 miles per hour. It's still, and I'll go ahead and put it in the, the meters per second. When we converted, we found it's 26.8 meters per second, 26.8 meters per second, 60 miles an hour. Uh, more interesting, what's the speed of car B? It's been accelerating, started at 0 meters per second. It's been accelerating at 5.4 meters per second squared for 9.926 seconds. We'll round it off, that answer off later as well. Well, to find its velocity, we use the first kinematic equation. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Again, acceleration must be constant to use this equation. We start at zero meters per second. We have an acceleration value. We have the time. We multiply those two, and we get 53.6 meters per second. Uh, for students in uh, the United States, you may not have much comprehension of what this uh, speed is, so let's convert it to miles per hour. We do this conversion. One mile per hour is equivalent to 0.447 meters per second. So to cancel off the meters per second, the conversion factor, the meters per second number has to be in the denominator. And now the meters per second of the 53.6 is canceled with the meters per second of the 0.447. You divide 53.6 by 0.447 and you find 120 miles per hour. Uh, do not try this. Uh, do not uh, set up this experiment in, uh, on a highway. and Try this, a dangerous uh, speed for uh, public roadways, uh, even dangerous for professional drivers. So don't attempt this. Now, uh, this first exclamation point, that is for that this is a fast speed. But I have three more exclamation points here. And uh, I'd like you to pause the video and repeat this calculation for the case when the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So repeat this calculation if we're uh, just accelerating car B at 2 meters per second squared. So just repeat all the work that's on the sheet here. You know, pause and back up the video and do your calculation on your own paper at 2 meters per second squared. I'll wait. Oh, I'm glad you paused. And what you found was that the final velocity is still 120 miles per hour off to the right. Uh, speed is 120 miles per hour. Well, try it again with 3 meters per second squared or 8 meters per second squared. What you will find is that the final velocity of uh, the car, of car B, the final speed is always 120 miles per hour. Uh, that seems a little peculiar if you're accelerating a slower uh, rate, shouldn't the speed be slower when the cars are side by side? If you're accelerating at a higher rate, uh, 8 meters per second squared, shouldn't the final uh, speed be higher? No. And the answer can be, uh, help you find the answer by taking a look at a graph of uh, speed versus time. So we have the two cars here. Car A is the constant 60 miles per hour, and you back to miles per hour instead of meters per second. You can do something different if you wish. Car B is accelerating, and the acceleration is constant. So the graph of speed versus time, velocity versus time, whatever you wish, is a straight line. And what's interesting about this is that the distance traveled 
is the area under a curve on a graph of velocity versus time for the case um, <coughs> of the car A, it's a rectangle, 60 miles per hour is the height of the rectangle, time t is the long side of the rectangle, so that would be the area underneath the uh, curve, it's a straight line, but quote-unquote curve for car A. For car B, it's a triangle, and the area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height, so one-half the base is t, out to this point, and the height is the final velocity of car B. Uh, the t's cancel, multiply by 2, and you find that the uh, speed of car B is 120 miles per hour, and there's no acceleration factor in this answer. This final velocity for car B is independent of the acceleration vector. And another clue or how you might have arrived at this answer of 120 miles per hour, the average speed for both cars is the same. Uh, distance is equal to average speed multiplied by the time of travel. And car A, its average speed is a constant, it is equal to the constant speed, 60 miles per hour. For car B, it starts at zero, it ends at 120, it's on a straight line on this graph of velocity versus time. Its average speed is 60 miles per hour. So, an interesting problem here. We have uh, two cars side by side getting to be side by side again where one car has a constant speed, the other one's accelerating. Um, as you work your problems, um, suggest you do make sketches of what's happening, label things, and then think about what equations are valid. Do you have constant acceleration? Do you have constant speed? You'll use different equations uh, in those two situations. Um, if you want to see some more uh, physics and astronomy videos and sample problems. Uh, they're indexed at these two websites. I do not collect uh, personal information. It's all free. Um, I hope you work some more sample problems. Ask your instructor if you have questions.